Hey, welcome back everybody. Timothy here with Mana Rocks, playing some companions. We know the deal. This is like episode 8 or something like that, so why don't we all just agree to skip the introduction and roll the dice and see which companion we're playing today. We've only got three left, Kahira, Loris, and Jagantha. So we'll let fate decide which one. Oh, Loris it is. So yes, we had to go with the flavor of the month. We had to go with the Cyclon deck here, which we'll check out here. A um, bunch of different lists, the, the, but they, they kind of all just boil down to the same things. Really the only big things are whether or not they play Improbable Alliance. I saw one playing a single one of Defin and Clarion, which is kind of cool because your foxes get big and everything. But for the most part, you're playing some combination of every one mana mana rock. Hold, hold up, Brandon. Hold up. Um, did I say mana rock? Every one mana cycler that you can get a hand of, a hold of in Jeskai colors. Most of them, if you're playing black in your mana base at all, you'll play uh, whatever the um, Thoughtseize type card is, the Memory Leak, I think it's called. But for the most part, if you haven't seen this deck somehow, if you've been living under a rock or haven't played any standard or limited, the Cyclone deck, which has become a bit of a meme-ish kind of good standard deck, relies on Flourish and Foxes. Draineth Stingers for the most part as far as board presence goes to a minor extent Draineth Healer and also Valiant Rescuer to kind of just muck up the board make big creatures make it hard for your opponent to attack you for the win meanwhile you're cycling all these one mana spells you're getting fairies off your improbable alliances you're making giant flourishing foxes you're getting incidental damage all while not really doing anything and then you mop up the game with Zenith Flare which is in fact the best card right the way Loris fits into this is that, you know, all of your <laughs> permanents cost two or less. So Loris is kind of just a natural fit here. Um, the other possible companion you can have for Cyclone deck, I'm sure there are others, but one that comes to mind is Zerda because Cyclone is an activated ability. You'll notice every card in the set just hat or every card in the deck has an activated ability with the exception of Zenith Flare, which is the deal breaker because this is just the best card. This is basically your win con if your Flourish and Foxes don't get there. So this is the type of deck that whenever I play against it, my opponent always has the nut draw of Flourish and Fox and the Stinger and the Cycle Cycle Zenith Flare you. Like every single time. <laughs> I, I've never seen a Cyclone deck not have the turn one Flourish and Fox. Um, we'll see if that happens for us. I think you're playing 20 lands here, 12, 13, 14... Uh, plus six, 20 lands, right? But you are a cycling deck, so if you have one or two lands you can operate, you do still need to kind of hit lands every turn. Um, I think this is the type of deck that's really popular right now because it's kind of, uh, it's all there, right? It's basically a straightforward, out-of-the-box type deck where if you have all these commons and uncommons, you can just build the deck, right? And you get to play with a companion. Basically, you get to play with all of the cool stuff from the new set, except for the mutate stuff. And it's all this big package deal. It feels like almost a, a starter deck of sorts, where like all of the tools are just straightforward. Everything does kind of its own thing, and there's not a lot of um, not a lot of I don't know variation to the way you play. I guess there's probably a little bit, but one thing I noticed playing against this is that you do actually cast the card Go for Blood a decent amount of the time because you usually have big foxes and stuff like that. So Go for the Blood is one of the cycling cards that you probably want to cycle last. But you basically never cast Footfall Crater, Startle and Development, or any of the blue cards, even though the mana base supports being able to cast blue cards. And we're not going to talk about the sideboard as usual because we're going to play best of one. So that's the name of the game. We will cycle, 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 and see if we can get the dream deck to come together for us. I don't have high hopes for it, but it seems like it should be fun regardless, at least for us. And uh, there you go. That's our Loris deck. I decided to go with this over like a Black White Aristocrats deck because that one is so close to what Obosh decks tend to be doing. And I wanted to play something a little bit, a variant of what we've already done. Tried to go for more unique builds with a lot of these different companions. So the Cyclone deck seems like a, a shoe in really. That's going to go ahead and do it for the intro. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Find us on Twitter at MTG underscore. Mana rocks, and let's get into some matches. See you there for match number one. All right, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. We're here against the mirror match. What is this, modern? Lurus against Lurus. Um, we've got a reasonable hand. I think, you know, any number of cycling payoffs plus lands is going to be a keep. Uh, I assume you're supposed to go, like, Draineth Stinger on turn two. That way you have some sort of board presence that can attack. But we'll see. We might be playing against a cycling deck, a mirror match for all we know. Doesn't tell us anything yet, and there you go. <laughs> See? <laughs> look, look what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about. It's like, oh, yay, look, Fortune Fox on turn one, but look at my hand. All right, um, we are just going to play a tap land here. 
opponent's gonna get this to the point where it's really big, but if I draw like a Valiant Rescuer, it's not too big of a deal. The problem, of course, is that this ends up dealing a decent amount of damage by the time you can actually block it, and uh, wow, double Flourish and Fox, they're just rubbing it in. They're like, oh, I heard in the intro you never draw Flourish and Fox, what was that? So, I mean, <sighs> this matchup's gotta be whoever's on play versus draw, because they're gonna kill us with a Zenith Flare. I almost don't even want to play the rest of this match, because we already know how it's going. They cycle three times next turn. We take 10 damage on turn three. Seems cool. Seems fun. Seems like a good time. Meanwhile, we're playing our two. Two mana, two, two on turn two. No big deal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Improbable, improbable Alliance only does so much as far as blocking goes. Yep. I think they're looking for a third land from the looks of it. Ooh, we might only take eight this turn. What? Nope, they've got a land. Not gonna block, and we're probably just dead next turn. Unless we're chump blocking already. Can't go for blood anything. I can make a fairy. That's the best I can do is go fairy, hallowed fountain, go down to eight, cycle. Make a blocker attack for two. Ah, oh, there's a Valiant Rescuer. That could that could keep us alive. That could keep us alive. Of course, our life total is going to be so low now. I guess if they have four Cyclers in their hand, we're just dead this turn. They could also have a go for blood. All right, we're done. I'm not going to let my opponent figure out how to kill us there. We're, we're dead in a number of different ways. We have no way of coming back. There you go. Flourish and Fox on turn one. <laughs> just rubbing it in. I love, I absolutely love when I pick a deck and then I play the mirror match and the opponent wins. It just has like the nut draw. Uh, let's go ahead and run it back. Match number two coming up. All right, welcome back. See, no, where are my foxes? Where are my foxes? What's the plural fox? Is it foxen? All right, we're going to keep this. Pretty sure you're supposed to go rescuer as soon as possible. No companion on the other side. So no free information. Uh, this would be a nice hand to have a fox. I assume mono red. Shock Gilded Goose. What? What's going on? I haven't seen Gilded Goose in forever. Forgot that card was standard legal. All right, let's go ahead and jam our Valiant Rescuer. Start getting some pressure on board, and then next turn, cycle. You can cycle once on each player's turn to make a 1-1 on each turn. I'm expecting some sort of Jun Sacrifice deck here. If they have Mayhem Devil, that is probably one of the better cards they can have against us. Yikes. Now I have no idea. This is going to be... What, what am I missing here? Abzan? Five color nonsense? All right, we're going to go ahead and cycle and just look for a land here. Could go for blood and kill Gilded Goose, but we're not doing that. Uh, Cycle. Might even cycle a second time if I don't draw a land. We did draw a land, so I'm going to go ahead and play another Valiant Rescuer here. And I wonder if I offer my Valiant Rescuer as a trade for Paradise Druid. I kind of want to. They have five mana next turn. If not, we get that damage in, makes our Zenith Flare better. The whole goal of the deck is to get the opponent just low enough that Zenith Flare kills them. They've shocked twice, escaped to the wild. Tapping out, they can play an additional land. They only hit one. That's a time wipe. That is a time wipe. Um, time wipe's double white, though. So if we kill Paradise Druid, they have to have a natural white source. I wonder if I just go... Well, well, I get to attack for a million here. Three, seven, put our opponent down to six. And if they do time wipe us, we probably have enough cycling cards in the graveyard to kill them anyway. So we'll do this. Yep, yep, steam vents. So Zenith Flare tells you two, three, four, five. Fires of Invention. Still need a land in order to uh, cast that time wipe. There it goes. <clears throat> so the Zenith Flare is just lethal because when they time wipe here, they're going to put three cycling cards in the graveyard. Pick up your Gilded Goose. No, pick up your Paradise Druid. We even know they can't interact, so shabam. Thanks for all the damage you did to yourself there. Fun game. See how I kind of did nothing? I just played a bunch of draft uncommons. You can see how the fox would have been amazing there too. 
this might be a quick quick one. This might be the quickest one. We, we'll see how it goes. That's already two matches in, and we probably only played for like five minutes total. But anyway, uh, you get the idea. That's what we're going to be trying to do this whole time. Not sure what that opponent's deck was, but it seemed kind of cool. And uh, this will be match three coming up already. See you there. Welcome back. Hey, boys and girls, check it out. On the play, Fox, Dranith, Singer, both lands. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's see if this is the dream. Our opponent's going to go like Shock Shock. Shock Bone Crusher Giant. Fox it up. See what kind of information we get here. No companion on the other side once again. Mono Red would be kind of annoying. I wonder if we're just supposed to get this up to a 3-3 on turn 2 if I am against Mono Red. Because it makes it more likely that they have things like Bone Crusher Giant. Oh, they're going to... Oh, what is this? <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> absolutely knew that was going to be another fox all right so i can get this up to a 3-3 they can't block there's zero chance they block here i'm just gonna play draineth stinger so they went with a non-companion version which means they have something in their deck that means they can't play loris excuse me Yep, you can get your fox up to a 3-3 three, three here. And let's see if they attack. I, I doubt it, right? Otherwise, I just jam back. I'm going to jam back with my fox. Oh, if that was an untapped land, they wouldn't even be able to block the fox. <laughs> oh, you know what? <laughs> I can cast Startle and Development here. I can just cast Startle and Development. They block the Draineth Stinger. They might not block at all, but... I do have actual cards in my hand that I can cast. Opponent might be trying to figure out why I attacked with the Draineth Stinger. They probably just look at their own list. Ah, oh, beautiful. I even get in an extra point of damage. I don't get to cycle anything, but I do get to put a card in the graveyard with cycling, which matters. Boom, boom, boom. Play land. And they scoop. Good game. This is fun. This is entertaining, fun magic. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, see how we have Loris too? Isn't this really cool that we have a companion that we're probably never going to cast? That's three matches in. We got two more. We're probably 20 minutes into this recording. <laughs> I'll see you all in match number four. Ladies, gentlemen, we're back. Check it out. Turn one fortune, Fox. <laughs> Uh, happy fox. There we go. In honor of the turn one fortune fox. Sorry, opponent. Pay two life, cast a fox, pass turn, no companion on the opposite side. Uh, this is the type of hand that if we're playing against some sort of creature deck, you could theoretically cast the go for bloods. Temple Garden. Well, there's a stinger. We'll just cast stinger on two. I think that's right to just cast stinger on two. Temple Garden doesn't give me too much information. I would assume um, Bant, but there's no Yorion. Naya, Dreadhorde Arcanist. That could be a nasty card. That could be a nasty card. Do need to do some cycling here, though. All right, I'm going to attack with both. And just cycle twice here. So if our opponent has some really good shock type effect, I guess they would need to pump this to kill both of our creatures. All right, lands, pretty decent draw there. Go and pass. Cycle another go for blood. See, the late, late, late game effect. This is probably some Feather the Redeemed Seasons greeting <laughs> deck. I don't know what that card's called. What is it? Season of, season of Growth? Seasons greeting? I don't know. But yeah, like Loris, sometimes you get... I've played against it where the game goes on forever. You end up playing Loris and start casting these guys out of your graveyard. Ooh, Domri's Ambush. Oh, are they going to kill both of our creatures? Wow, Domri's Ambush. Oh no, they're not going to kill the Flourish and Fox. Uh, I will Cycle, though. Which one? Cycle will go for blood here. 
So thankfully this gets up to a 4-4, four, four. otherwise they would be able to kill both my creatures. But they can make this a 3-5, get another counter on it, and then we're probably going to cast Go for Blood on our turn. Nice. So we will... I think I plan to go Shock... Just kill him with Zenith Flare next turn. It doesn't even matter if we kill this or not, right? Can they stop the Zenith Flare from killing them? Can they gain life? I'm just going to play on the safe side. So I'm going to cast Draineth Stinger, Cycle, Healer. Oh no, I can't cycle the Healer. That was bad. That's fine. I still think the Zenith Flare is going to kill him. I was supposed to just cycle and then cast Go for Blood. I don't know why I thought I could cast two two drops and cycle a card. Which I certainly can't do, but this is fine. Cycle, draw. Still going to deal six, seven, eight. They're going to go down to one here. So now they're dead to anything. I have the Zenith player in hand. That kills them. This thing cycles and kills them. Of course, they've got Domri's Ambush in the graveyard. They were smart to not cycle it. But they're going to have to be able to block a Flourishing Fox as well or deal 12 to us this turn somehow. I don't know. It's like Colossus enough. Moment of Heroism. That gains life. Plus two, plus two, and lifelink till end of turn. So if they go Domri's Ambush. Wow. They're going to Domri's Ambush this too. <laughs> this random moment of heroism. All right, I lied. They gain a million life back here. I lied. We probably just lost the game now. That's kind of incredible. Moment of heroism. A card that I wouldn't have guessed is even in standard. All right, well now things get a little bit harder because we've got a Zenith Flare that thing. I think I'm going to play this tapped and... Do I let them cast Moment of Heroism? No, they've got all sorts of pumps and stuff. Let's just kill this now, gain some life back, and pass. Youch. Way to go sideways instantly. This is where we end up probably casting Loris. Paradise Druid, three cards in hand from the opponent. Probably some combination of pump spells. I could just cast a Boon of the Wish Giver. But I feel like this is where we're supposed to go for Loris. Holy crap. That's kind of impressive from the opponent, I'm not going to lie. I can play exactly one of these. I think I just want to play the Stinger. Shock. Play Stinger. And pass. And we'll see what happens this next turn. See if Lurus survives. I don't expect it to. Season of Growth, yep. There's the, the Season's Greeting. Their best play last turn was a Paradise Druid, though. 10th District Legionnaire is good. I will... I don't know. I don't think I can block that. They have a mana up with Paradise Druid. If they attack, it's a little sketch. They have a 1 mana spell that can target the Legionnaire. Okay, that tells me they probably don't have a one mana spell. Oh, another Zenith Flare. And a Rescuer. So let's go Stinger, Rescuer. I can probably attack with my other Stinger, right? If it trades for Paradise Druid, that's probably okay. Because I'm going to make some blockers here. Oh, they do have a one mana spell? Nice. I mean, make them use it now. God's willing. I, I'm glad to get that out of the way. They do just cantrip it, so that's fine. Uh, I need to do this before damage. So deal two damage, make a 1-1. One, one. Hopefully draw into another one mana cycler. That I can cycle on their turn. No, but double Zenith Flare's got to be good. I 
I guess we got to watch out for moment of heroism. But this is where they could go off with that season, especially since they get to scry every time they target something. Yep, drew another moment. That's going to become a 6-6 lifelinker till end of turn. Opponent's not going to make this easy, are they? <clears throat> Thrash. I like how we're just getting destroyed. They gained life off that too. They'll gain life when this thing attacks. Seven. Can't block it. I'm not going to block. There's no way. <laughs> Opponent's at 29. Okay, well, I think again we have to flare here. They have a God's willing? God! All right, all right, you got me. I'm going to shame scoop. <laughs> you got me four or five times this game. I could have played much differently to make this stuff not happen, and I didn't. Uh, I didn't expect the moment of heroism, but I, I could have for sure not run into two God's Willens there. I, I didn't think they would have it both times. Like, come on, they have to have it, and they had it. My opponents usually do, though. So we take another loss to a season's, uh, Season of Growth deck that I think we probably could have won, given that we drew three Zenith Flares, but <laughs> we played a little fast and loose and didn't get there. And we'll run it back for one more and call it a day on the Cyclone deck. Be a quick one. Match number five coming up. All right, welcome back. No companion once again. Moco Moco. Ooh, can't spell moco without oko uh this looks not great looks like a little bit too slow of a cycle in hand but we're going to keep on account of we can cast a bunch of our important cards and have some mana and whatnot i like how our opponent just like completely wrecked us last game and we probably had the win if we had played differently just got destroyed every step of the way uh valiant rescuer has got to be better than draneth stinger here i imagine Opponent playing Godless Shrine leads me to believe it's some sort of Esper Control deck, which has board sweepers, which are good against this deck. I lied. <laughs> They're Mardu. Perhaps Knights. Lava Coil. People, people playing Lava Coil these days. All right. Stinger and start cycling. Playing against some sort of weird Mardu Control deck. I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh-huh. I'm going to coil this, too. Agonize and Remorse. Uh, take whatever you want. I'd rather not cycle first and hit a Zenith Flare and have them take a Zenith Flare. All of these cards are essentially the same. They should exile Drenith Stinger here. Yep. Smart. And then on their end step, we will cycle a Gopher Blood. I don't know. I'm expecting Deafening Clarion now, given that they're playing control cards here. All right. We will... I don't think I care about the life gain, but I will cycle this. Attack for two. I don't know if I'm playing the healer yet or not. That's why I didn't cast it and gain the life first. Because it does represent an extra point of damage. Cycle here. I wonder if anyone's cast a footfall crater yet in a standard. Flourish and Fox. I'm going to get that on line and just pass the turn here. Again, if our opponent sweeps the board, that does power up the Zenith Flare, so to speak. But I don't know what to expect here. I'm expecting <laughs> exactly that. Uh, let's get a point of damage out of our Drenith Stinger there. And then we might just have to go Loris into Fox here. Have some sort of board pressure. This is strange happenings from the opponent there. We'll go ahead and get Loris on board, probably get Clarion again. Why wouldn't they have the second Clarion, right? Go and play Fox. Pass turn. I wonder what their, their end game is. Oh, the, the Phoenix? God, I, I change back to the normal art. Okay, you have the Phoenix. So they didn't mutate it. It's just 4-4 four, four Flyer for 4 here. This is the one that if you mutate it, you get a, an artifact token. Feather, not Feather the Redeemed. Um, and then you can sack that to put a phoenix back on board. So what am I expecting next? The bat? I feel like my opponent's going to play the bat. Zenith Flare at 6. Um, as long as they don't gain life, I don't care. What happens if I go... Yeah, Zenith Flare's on 6. What happens if I go attack with both? Cycle once. They go down to minimum 8. 
Um, I guess, here, let's just cast some stuff. Uh, da da da. I can cast start on development on this. It'll become a 5 5. I feel like I'm better off just cycling cards, though. Yeah. As long as they don't gain life, famous last words. Put them down to nine. And if they wipe the board, that puts three cyclers in my graveyard. So I'll have nine exactly on the Zenith Flare. They play another Phoenix. Okay, I feel like I've got this. I feel like we've probably got this. Oh, I can cast Frostvale Ambush. Oh yeah, <laughs> we're casting Frostvale Ambush. Attack for the win. Nice. So what do you think? What do you think about the Cyclone deck? <laughs> Look, it's a Lurus deck, right? We played Lurus. It gives you extra value. That's why Lurus is an insane card. Sometimes you never play it, and it's like, whatever. I had this option. And sometimes you play it, and it just draws you like two or three extra cards throughout the course of the game, which is pretty crazy in a deck that just wants to put all its cards in the graveyard. We didn't even have to cast the Zenith Flare. So again, this deck is kind of the real deal, but it is like, I feel like it's a flash in the pan type deck. Um, because imagine my opponent, like, <laughs> imagine someone who brings in um, Leyline of the Void against you. Not only does it exile all of your Cyclone cards that hit the graveyard, so your Zenith Flare is a dead card, but it also stops Glorus, right? So you would have to get some foxes on board really early and just hope you can beat your opponent down. We didn't really get to go off with Improbable Alliance at all in five games, but we cast a Frostvale Ambush. We could have cast from Gopher Bloods. We cast a Startling Development. Um, I feel like we perhaps could have beaten the uh, Naya Season deck if we had played a little bit more carefully there, maybe just kept up things for Zenith Flares and responded to our opponent. But look, Moment of Heroism, that's just going to get you. Is that even a real card? Did my opponent make that up? No, that's a real card from Avacyn Restored, I guess. Not bad. I mean, it gained him like 50 life, so that's got to be pretty good. All right, this was a quick one, and it was a fun one. I don't know if it was fun for my opponents. I kind of hate the fact that this deck exists because it feels like just a really good draft deck, but we'll see if it uh, stands the test of time in this really powerful companion-driven standard. And that's going to do it for this video. That leaves us with good old Kahira and Gigantha left. Um, stay tuned for those two. Remember, as always, subscribe below for more content like this. Find us on Twitter at MTG underscore Manorox. Look, if you, if you watch to the end of this video, the end of this 25, 30 minute video, just go to Twitter real quick, MTG underscore Manorox, hit follow. I would love to hear from you. Tell me you enjoyed the Loris Cyclone deck. Um, and then stay tuned for the last two. So again, my name's Timothy with Manorox. Thanks for watching. See y'all next time.